Welcome to your weekly airplane news update. This is the week of November 1st, 2021. And this week we got four topics. The first one, well, the first one is kind of interesting. It's uh, 5G altimeter interference. We'll talk about what 5G towers can do to actual airplanes. And this is not really a good thing. The next thing is the FAA is going to approve 600 new engines that can use the GAMI unleaded fuel. We'll talk about that. Something cool here, an amphibious C-130. We'll talk about what that looks like and then kind of the goal for this. And then lastly, an update to the airman certification standards for CFIs is uh, right around the corner. So let's get to it. All right, the first thing this week is the 5G, well, a little bit of a controversy. And, and I know there's a lot of stuff going on with 5G and, and I'm not one of these people that believe that this is something that uh, can be pretty dangerous for us, but this can be pretty dangerous for aviation for a different way. The FAA is about to issue a Spatial Airworthiness Information Bulletin. And if you don't know what it is, this is what the FAA issues when something major happens. And uh, in this case, they're also planning on having an Airworthiness Directive, an AD. And this is because of the rollout of 5G service on uh, at different major cities. And this is 46 major cities. And they plan on doing this on December 5th, which is right around the corner. Now, let's think about the issue here. The 5G network... Telecom companies have spent a lot of money, $78 billion for that matter, to access that band, which is 3.7 to 3.98 gigahertz. And this happens to be the same frequency that is being used by radar altimeters for aircraft that do precision approaches. And we're talking about CAT2 and CAT3. Now, if you don't know what a CAT2 or CAT3 is, this is what aircraft are using in order to, well, land at airports in very poor visibility conditions. And in this case, the 5G may interfere with CAT2 and CAT3 approach because it might be interfering with the radar altimeter. And this is not a good thing, obviously. Uh, this is a major issue. Now, um, th there are a lot of issues here. The, the first issue is if these towers are built close to an airport, 5G towers are built close to an airport, then in this case, it's possible that until work is being done on these aircraft, then they won't be able to shoot CAT2 or CAT3 approaches. Now, imagine uh, a large commercial aircraft airliner that is not able to land at an airport when visibility is low because they can't change CAT2 and CAT3. They can't uh, shoot CAT2 and CAT3 approaches. And also think about how long this is going to take to get fixed. The FAA is going to have to do some paperwork. We all know the FAA moves at, well, the speed of government, and they know it. Um, and, and now we're going to have to, well, we, the FAA is going to have to fix this thing. And of course, the FCC is kind of giving everybody the middle finger, and they're saying, deal with it. Um, kind of typical of the FCC, I would say. And then uh, the telecom companies don't want to, you know, not put their 5G network because this is how they make their money. So I think this is not the first that we're going to hear about this. I think this is actually going to be a pretty big deal for airlines or for anyone that flies with a radar altimeter. And uh, well, and we'll see what else comes out of it. So uh, more on that very soon. The next thing is the FAA is about to approve 600 new engines, or actually they have already approved 600 new engines that are going to be using the GAMI unleaded fuel. This is a different type of fuel that is, well, unleaded. Uh, and up until now, we've been using low lead fuel, which, uh, well, which a lot of people say is not really all that great for the environment and, and for ourselves. And uh, this includes light coming engines uh, up to 360 cubic inches, which is pretty popular. Continental up to three, uh, 470 cubic inches of displacement. And then some radial engine by Pratt & Whitney and then Curtis Wright. So uh, 600 new engine. This is pretty cool. I think this is a good thing. Uh, we're changing the way that we do things in terms of fuel, in terms of uh, getting electrical aircraft out there. Uh, the, uh, there's going to be an additional list of approved engine expected from the FAA in 2022. So we'll keep an eye out for that. The next thing is the military is working on a float system for the C-130 cargo aircraft. If you're not familiar with the C-130, this is a huge, huge transport aircraft for the military. And um, they are planning on having a working prototype by 2022. This will allow the military to deploy in areas where, well, where there may be water and uh, where they can't operate at the moment. Uh, they haven't operated, the military hasn't operated an amphibious aircraft since uh, in the last 50 years, in over 50 years. So uh, this will be interesting. Hopefully this even makes it to the civilian sector where we can see maybe search and rescue starting to use uh, these aircraft and, uh, and just having better ability to do their job, quite frankly. 
Last thing this week, the FAA is looking to change the Airman Certification Standard, that's the ACS for CFIs. If you don't know what the ACS is, it's this document that the FAA puts out for every single certificates that are out there. And based on, um, based on this, it gives you the standards that you need to meet before you can get your certificate. And, and, and in the past, it was called a PTS, Practical Test Standards. Uh, a lot of licenses have been converted since to ACS. Now, the FA is trying to make a change here to um, add more aeronautical decision making. And they would require this to be taught at the CFI level, but also adding it to uh, some of the uh, other certificate like sport and private. And well, it's already in the private, I shouldn't say it's not in there, but they, they want to basically force pilots to learn ADM and, and get CFIs better trained to teach ADM. Uh, this is kind of a, a topic that really interests me. This is a topic that at first I did not really enjoy. I didn't enjoy it as a student pilot. I didn't enjoy teaching it as a, a CFI when I was a young CFI. And the more experience I have now, the more I realize how important this is and how uh, how difficult it is actually to teach ADM. I think this is something that we often kind of skim over and, uh, and, and that's a mistake, quite frankly. ADM is extremely important. Uh, as a matter of fact, we put out an ADM course for the FA on fasafety.gov for drone pilots and it's called ALC 723. Uh, if you can actually take it, if, even if you're a manned aircraft pilot, tons of great information in there and helping you, well, figure out uh, bad behaviors and how to identify them, risk management, uh, risk, um, uh, risk analysis. There, there's a risk, risk mitigation. There's a lot of different things that are covered in this course. So it's free. It's available on the FA website, fasafety.gov, and you can actually even get credits for it, Winx credit. So I uh, encourage you to get to it. All right. That's all I have. Uh, we have actually some great news. We're moving into a new facility. We get the keys on Monday. We've been doing a lot of hard work the last couple of days to get this new place set up uh, with a new background. So the background that you see behind me here uh, may not be here for very long. So we'll have a couple more uh, of these news updates here and then we'll be switching to the new place. I'm really excited for you guys to see this new place. It's amazing and uh, yeah, and I'm excited. So that's it. Like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next week.